Hi, I'm Sanjay Mortimer, and I just wanted to run through the history of the RepRap project and how it led to the modern 3D printing explosion that we're seeing today. So the RepRap project was developed as a part of a University of Bath initiative by a professor called Adrian Bowyer. Um, and he was thinking of this way back in 2004 even. Um, and Adrian wrote a paper based on the concept of a self-replicating machine. And he chose to take this forward using a technology called FDM, or Fused Deposition Modeling. Um, and that tech had existed as early as 1989, um, and it was developed by a guy called Scott Crump. And he patented that technology and formed what is now a very successful company called Stratasys. By around the mid-2000s, the patent on FDM had expired, and this meant that Adrian was able to build his own 3D printer using parts initially printed by a true Stratasys FDM printer owned by his university. So way back in the early 2000s, 3D printers were huge, big machines. They looked like a refrigerator. Um, they cost like really, really large amounts of money. The ones that Adrian bought were apparently 50,000 and 300,000 pound machines. So really significant, big pieces of equipment. So Adrian looked into basically replicating the technology of FDM by looking at its fundamental principles, learning from the machines he had from Stratasys, and turning it into a new 3D printer that he built from a mixture of 3D printed parts and non-3D printed parts. And he was able to replicate a functioning machine um, that was able to print new parts of itself for around 2% of the price of the 50,000 pound machine. So Adrian christened this printer Darwin after the father of the principles of evolution. Um, and this printer Darwin was capable of creating 3D printed parts, but also 3D printed parts of itself. So you could build clones of a Darwin by printing on a Darwin. Um, based on his initial success, he kind of saw that he was off to a winner. Um, and began documenting his findings and his approaches and even his background with thought processes on a University of Bath blog. Um, and he decided to make the entire source of the RepRap project fully open source, um, essentially giving free reign to anyone to use, build, or profit from that work. Um, and the reason behind this is that Adrian basically saw it as practically futile um, and kind of self-defeating to create a machine intended to clone itself and then try and prevent people from using it to clone itself. It just didn't make any sense. So the most sensible approach in Adrian's mind was to make that project fully open source. So initial interest in RepRap was kind of slow and Adrian quotes that within the first three years, there are only four RepRaps. Um, but around 2010, there were a bunch of articles and something clicked and the popularity of RepRap kind of just exploded. And suddenly there were 2000 RepRaps all over the world. So because of the open source nature of RepRap, eventually this led to lots of volunteers contributing their own efforts and ideas on how to kind of improve the printer and iterate and take it forward. Um, despite this not even really being Adrian's initial intention. The thought process behind this was not too dissimilar to how natural selection played out in Charles Darwin's Survival of the Fittest, where only the most successful mutations, or in this case, printer modifications, would go on to be adopted by the community and produce offspring, whereas the less successful modifications would die out. So the only difference that the evolution of RepRaps had to animals in the wild was a RepRaps need for a symbiotic relationship with humans in order to reproduce. Um, humans are responsible for helping the printers reproduce by providing them with vitamins, which are like bearings, pulleys, and even hot ends. And by assembling the RepRaps in return, the RepRaps would provide the humans with printed parts which are useful to them. Um, the kind of symbiotic relationship is kind of inspired by and very similar to the one that bees have with flowers in the wild. The bees assist with the pollination of the flowers, and in return, the bees will receive nectar and building materials for their hives. Over the next few years, the RepRap community grew to thousands, each working on their slightly or in some cases even drastically different methods to improve on Darwin's initial design. They were designing their own printers based on Darwin and sharing their findings and documenting their thought processes on their own blogs, much like Adrian was as they went. 
So the first big successor, RepRap version 2, was named Mendel after Gregor Mendel. And he was the father of genetics, so continuing the evolutionary theme. Hi, this is just a short uh, video to introduce Mendel, which is the second generation of the RepRap machines. Um, it had a lot of improvements over Darwin. Its design was lighter, it had a larger build volume, and it was much simpler to assemble. So the Mendel design was later mutated to become the now famous Prusa Mendel, which is how Joe Prusa got started in the 3D printing world. And the Prusa Mendel simplified a lot of aspects of the Mendel's build process, with a focus on making it cheaper and easier to build, and with a lot less fasteners, which, as you'll know, if you ever built an original Mendel, is a big improvement. So lots of other contributions were made by individuals that focused on improving the build process and the performance of the Mendel. Um, one huge contribution, in my opinion, was the Wade's geared extruder and the subsequent Greg's Wade's extruder. Um, and that was cheaper, faster, better performing than Adrian's original kind of geared extruder. That extruder continued to evolve over the next few years, spawning what later became known in the community as remixes. Um, each of those improved on its usage or eased the implementation of the extruder. Speaking of variations, in early 2010, the RepRap Rep Huxley was introduced. And Huxley was an effort to miniaturize a Mendel. And that meant that you could print uh, the parts for a Huxley in one third of the time it would take to print the parts of a Mendel. Um, so it was around this kind of time that the E3D story begins with Dave and I, um, we were at a teacher's trade fair um, for design technology teachers, which is what we were training to be at the time. And we bumped into a guy called Jean-Marc Giacalone, um, and he'd started a company and done a crowdfunding campaign for what was um, the eMaker Huxley. Um, the company eMaker would actually later go on to join forces with Adrian and become RepRap Pro. Hello, my name's Adrian Bowyer. I'm the person who invented the RepRap machine and started the RepRap project a few years ago. And this is Jean-Marc, and I'm the founder of eMaker. We've now got together to form a joint company called RepRap Pro in order to take that machine, develop it further, and ship 100 more of them for Christmas. The printer we bought was an eMaker Huxley, I think it was serial number 93. Um, and we built that printer in Dave's kitchen, and I still remember commissioning it um, way back in 2010. So in all honesty, this video was meant to be for Maker Faire Malta, and we were supposed to have the more recent history of RepRap displayed as a kind of story on our stand. Um, that didn't happen because of COVID-19. However, if you would like to see a video about the more recent history of the RepRap project, then let us know down in the comments below, and we'll see what we can do. Thank you very much. Mag they're really they are magnesium die castings on there. It's a really, really nice piece of die casting. Have you ever seen one of the bodies in white, like when it's unpainted? No. So the, the whole body of one of these is die cast, like a, like a Hermara heat sink. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like injection molded out of metal, but it's like they're super complex. They're like some of the most complex die casted things in the world um, until Elon's going to die cast an entire Tesla Model Y. Like, yeah, like real talk. It will be like the largest die cast thing ever. There's a, it's amazing. It's got a really cool pattern on it.